MLS, talk of a trade war this weekend following President Donald Trump's proposal of tariffs on steel and aluminum rattled international markets, and state officials are trying to predict the impact it could have in Alabama. Last week, Trump said tariffs could come as early as this week on steel and aluminum imports, 25% for steel and 10% for aluminum. I'm hoping we hear crickets coming out of Washington, said Alabama Commerce Secretary Greg Canfield of whether an announcement could come later. What we're trying to get our arms around is what does this do to put jobs in Alabama at risk? We do believe there are jobs at risk. Why? Because tariffs will probably mean some kind of retaliation from other countries in the form of their own taxes. Over the weekend, the EU threatened tariffs on American-made motorcycles, blue jeans and bourbon. And Alabama goods are shipped all over the world, in increasing numbers. The news of aluminum tariffs already shook some Alabama breweries which rely on sales in aluminum cans. However, Alabama currently has 57,000 residents employed in the auto industry, both at factories and suppliers. All three auto producers are based in Europe and Asia. We are on the losing side of almost all trade deals. Our friends and enemies have taken advantage of the U.S. for many years. Our steel and aluminum industries are dead. Sorry, it's time for a change. Make America great again, Donald J. Trump, at Real Donald Trump. March 5, 2018 There were differing reactions from Alabama's automakers. Spokesman for the plants referred Al.com to corporate statements made over the weekend. Hyundai warned a tariff on steel and aluminum may cause it to think again about vehicle production in the U.S. Changes to the existing tariff structure could negatively impact our current U.S. production and further expansion. Jim Trainer, a Hyundai spokesman, stated, Imposing tariffs on steel could increase production costs which could lead to higher prices for U.S. consumers, and, potentially, decreased demand. Canfield said Hyundai both imports steel from South Korea into the U.S. for its cars, and uses about half of its steel from U.S. Speaking to Bloomberg on Saturday, Teru E. Tate, a Honda spokesman, said the company feels the move is imprudent. Honda extensively sources its steel and aluminum from U.S. suppliers, said Chris Abruxasey. North American Corporate Communications for Honda, in a statement to Al.com. However, tariffs imposed on imported steel and aluminum would raise prices on both domestic and imported products, thus causing an unnecessary financial burden on our customers. Alabama's newest auto company, Toyota, takes about 90% of its steel from the U.S. It said in a statement that tariffs will adversely impact auto companies by increasing costs and prices. Daimler the parent company of Mercedes-Benz, said it had no comment on the issue over the weekend, however, steel tariffs weren't the only issue Trump commented on affecting the German automaker. On Saturday, Trump threatened to tax European-made cars if the EU retaliates on the steel tariff issue. If the EU wants to further increase their already massive tariffs and barriers on U.S. companies doing business there. We will simply apply tax on their cars which freely pour into the U.S., they make it impossible for our cars, and more, to sell there. Big trade imbalance, Donald J. Trump, at Real Donald Trump, March 3, 2018 Trump's decision to move on steel is driven by what figures in the industry say is a massive excess steel capacity in the world, which they say is more than eight times larger than the annual output of all U.S. steel producers with foreign product in some cases subsidized by those governments. To advocates, steel is a national security issue, not just in terms of the quality of steel used in weapons, but also in terms of the imported steel's effect on the U.S. market. Thomas J. Gibson, President and CEO of the American Iron and Steel Institute, last week welcomed Trump's decision. Foreign steel imports surged again in 2017 up 15% from the previous year and capturing 27% of the U.S. market, Gibson said. About one-fourth of domestic steel capacity today is not being utilized. But Canfield said broad tariffs aren't needed, as much as a more targeted approach. I think there are issues that the president is trying to get to that don't require a broad brushstroke approach, because that will cost American jobs. He said, if he's trying to laser in on certain specific issues with certain countries like China, we need a more targeted approach in trade policy that is not going to impact American jobs. Consider this, Alabama has exported more than $20 billion in goods annually over the last two years, 
and the state's exports have soared 21% since 2011 and 50% over the past decade. Canfield said Alabama exports of iron and steel have surged over the last two years. In 2016, Alabama exported $1.1 billion worth. A year later, it was $1.5 billion, with steel going to Mexico, Canada, South Korea, and Belgium. Last year, Researchers at the Brookings Institution reported that smaller metropolitan areas around the U.S. would be disproportionately hurt by a trade shock. Among the top ten was Decatur, which placed seventh nationally among cities that rely on exports as a percentage of their gross domestic product, according to the institution's Metropolitan Policy Program. According to Brookings, 29.1% of Decatur's GDP is export-based with 7,867 jobs directly related to exports. Canfield said he knows the Trump administration understands the importance that European and Asian auto companies have in supplying American jobs. And for Alabama, there's also potential impact for its aviation and aerospace industries, which also use steel and aluminum. Even government agencies don't like to pay higher prices, he said. They are companies that have chosen to invest in Alabama, and they've made significant capital investments in the billions of dollars for Alabama, Canfield said. A certain amount of those jobs could be at risk, if content is priced so high that consumers will no longer be making those purchases, and that's not good. Over the last few years, we've done a pretty good job of growing jobs in Alabama, and we don't want to see that reversed.